It is officially our Tuesday night crew huddle, and we're so excited to be with you guys tonight. It's March 23rd. We have a little bit over a week left in this month, a lot of time to get stuff done. So without further ado, let's start out with our rock stars and um, make sure you're making last minute texts to your team, make sure they're getting in, all that good stuff. All right, so let's jump right in. I'm so excited for you guys to hear from our guest speaker tonight. Make sure you have a pad and a pen and all of that. Um, but let's start out with our rock stars for this last week. Um, coming in at CV volume number three, Miss Stacy Barker out of Montana. Awesome job, Miss Stacy. Um, number two, Dr. Freddie in San Diego. Congratulations, Dr. Freddie. And then number one position for highest CV um, thus far in March is Nikki and Bill Black. So congratulations to the CV rock stars. You guys know that our customers are really where it's at. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our customers. So congratulations to you guys. Um, Lynn, now let's jump into our recruiters, our top recruiters for brand ambassadors. We have Angela, Angela Cologne, hopefully I said that right. Um, tying with Sharon Gogni, I hope I said that right too, and totally correct me, you guys, don't be shy about that. Holly Peterson coming in, um, in second with four new brand ambassadors and Sarah Goff, number one position, um, with six new brand ambassadors. Congratulations, you guys, you're clearly doing the do, you're in the trenches, you're getting the activity, you've planted the seed. And now your harvest is coming. It's so exciting, you guys. So that's awesome. Congrats. And now our top PC getters, we have Brianna Barkey tied with Danielle Blackie uh, or Blakey. So congratulations to you two. Um, that's three PCs, which is huge, you guys. And then Deanna Martin, four PCs. And then number one, Jenna Tatro or Tatro. Hopefully I don't get that wrong. <laughs> Six PCs. So I don't know about you guys, maybe Katie and B and I can get together and have Jenna give a little training because that's pretty incredible to get six BCs and we're only at the 23rd of the month. So that's awesome. Um, and then we wanted to spend a little bit of time while we give our guest speaker time to get off of her other Zoom and get onto this Zoom um, to talk about sync. So there's quite a few things that you need to know about the conference. But one of the things that dawned on me, I would say within the first three weeks of ever being in this industry is the vital importance of events. So we really are an events driven business. We go from event to event to event. Hopefully you never have an event without knowing when your next event is. And everything that we're doing in between conferences is really us preparing for the Super Bowl. And our conference, our in sync conference in Dallas in September is our Super Bowl. That is where everything is at. That is what we all have our eyes focused on. So a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. One is you can make money right now to make up the, the cash that you need to get there, the cash that you need to spend on food. There's so many of us that have literally squeezed five, six people into a room um, I know Katie has a story. I know B has a story. Hannah has a story. I know Alyssa has a story. We all at the beginning did what we needed to do. If that meant eating the free food on the table and you like packed sandwiches and packed granola bars, that's what you did. Um, if that meant, like I said, rooming with a bunch of people. There's so many ways to get creative, you guys. And the worst thing that you could think is when I get to this rank, I'll go to conference. And the problem with that mindset is that you will never get to that rank without going to conference. And so if you see, if you want to be one of the leaders, maybe you want to be a bronze, maybe you want to be a silver or gold or, or higher, then you got to do what those guys are doing. And I promise you, they never miss a conference. So um, really band together, get creative. If you feel like you're really stuck, talk to your support line and get creative. They have so many, Hana is like the queen of creativity when it comes to making stuff happen. Um, so make sure you're looking at airlines, 
room, all of that stuff. So in sync has got to be the number one thing. Also, when you're signing on new brand ambassadors right now, that has got to be added to their launch is turning right around and getting their in sync ticket because we want to make sure that they're getting started on the right foot and they have um, an opportunity to see, to see that bigger picture, if you will. And you guys all know you can't see that bigger picture by watching it virtually. It, it's truly impossible. It's just not the same. Okay, so let's jump right in. Let's see if our guest speaker is on yet. All right, if anybody can see here or Kristen, if you are on, let me know. She just had to do a quick intro for Marielle. I don't see her yet. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna have, oh, there she is, she's coming in. Here we go, good timing. All right, Miss Kristen, we are actually ready for you, mama. Oh my gosh, talk Although about it. I haven't Andy. introduced you officially yet, so hold on. Um, oh, you guys, I'm sorry. so excited. I got real excited. <laughs> Kristen is a Ruby with Q Sciences. She's a mama of two boys. Bless her heart. She's got a husband making it three. Um, and actually, Dwayne, you guys, Dwayne is the coolest guy. He's an audio engineer, but he, I think he's kind of a composer. He's a musician. He's a singer. He's absolutely phenomenal at what he does. And he's a stay at home dad. So he stays at home so that Kristen can do what she does so well. Um, and I have a secret about Kristen that I'm going to share with you guys. She's a Britney Spears fan, like massive Britney Spears fan. So it's out of the bag, girl. It's all on you. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so true. And in fact, just the other day, who was it? Like Shannon Carlin or someone posted something like, what's something that doesn't sound true whenever you say it? Um, someone goes, yeah, we all are. <laughs> Thank God, my people. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, so it was like something that doesn't sound true, but it really is. And I was like, I have a Britney Spears tattoo because it doesn't sound true, but it really is because I actually have a Britney Spears tattoo. And no, I won't show any of you except for maybe Katie because we are very close. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay, well, yay. I am so freaking excited and a little intimidated by the people that are on this because I see Alyssa right now. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Alyssa. <laughs> I'm like big time fangirl, but so many of you guys, seriously, um, I honestly just feel honored. I don't know what kind of value I will be able to add to you rock stars, but I'm going to do my best and share some little things that I've learned. And when I was talking to Jen um, just about this and sharing something that um, I feel really, really, really strongly about, um, one of the things that came up, first of all, I just want to like preface it with this. Like, I get it. We talk about like timing, 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 time, all that, blah, 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 blah. Yes, timing is so, so, so important, but I'm not trying to create scarcity in you guys. What I'm trying to encourage you guys to do is to know your worth and to go out and to claim and to get what's yours because it's going to look different just in 12 months from today, just 12 months. I've been with this company almost three years to say that it looks different. Yeah. Cause you want to know why in the beginning, our website sucked. We barely got our products ever, let alone on time. Everything looked like it belonged in a doctor's office and looked all clinical looking. I'm like, why is the name science in the name? And we went through shipping delays insane when we launched. I mean, we're talking like those ground floor stages that like you're kind of excited about, but ugh, <laughs> it's the tough stages, right? Now is the time, like Mark Wilson talked about, when you're like baby stepping up the S curve, where things get not easy, not perfect. There's still a lot of those ground floor like bumps in the road. But I remember him saying whenever I first joined, he's like, you know, if you're standing on like train tracks and before you can see the train like coming and before you can even hear it blaring, you actually, if you're standing on the tracks, can feel it beneath your feet. The ground starts shaking. 
that's where we were. Now it's like the massive freight train is right there coming at your freaking face. And you can either jump off the tracks and get out of the way or lunge off to the side, wait till it swings past you and grab onto one of the poles as quickly as you can to just be jolted into the momentum. <laughs> like that is literally, I think of the Polar Express, by the way, I really love that movie. Um, but it's legit insane what's here right now. So I don't want that to create scarcity or anything because you could join today and you haven't missed it yet. It's okay. We are the opposite of saturated. Okay. It's time though. It's, it's, it's time wherever you're at. I don't care if you were there when I joined or before I joined, or if you just joined a week ago, it's time. So I hope that I can give you guys a couple little things that will help you do what I feel is the most important thing we should all be doing, which is personally exposing people to this as quickly as humanly possible, because your job is really not to sell products. Thank God, right? <laughs> Like, whoa, who wants to try and sell a bunch of products? I would like, oh, probably rather sell cars or something. Cause I feel like I say things wrong and I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually a decent salesperson. Like I could probably sell things. I used to sell clothes in a retail store, but whew, there's a lot of products, right? It can be overwhelming and the science and the info and all that behind them, not that kind of person. So you're not selling products. Don't worry. You are also not selling a comp plan. Don't feel like you have to be like selling and convincing a business. Q's not on trial. Trust me, we're already legit. Everyone's scared crapless about us anyway. Um, but the bottom line is you're not even selling a comp plan. You're just exposing people to this. And you're just offering it to anyone and everyone that will take a look. And the time is now. So if you are brand new and you're in your warm market, and you've got people that intimidate you, I want you to grab your mentor, sponsor, sideline, whatever, say, get on a Zoom with me face-to-face. -face. I'm going to tell you about this person and their name. Come up, help me come up with what to say because I've got to expose them to this now and at least offer it. If they say no, whatever, that's fine. Like move on. That's the beauty, honestly, of recruiting is because people are either interested or they're not. That's literally it. You actually don't even have to say the right words or do everything perfectly at all because people are either interested or they're not, right? And so I want to encourage you guys to face your fears and get through all of the people on your list. But if you're like me, you've been around the block for a bit, you might be out of your warm market. You're like, I told everybody <laughs> that I knew when I first joined about this. So now what do I do? Well, I'm just meeting new people because if there is anything I've learned from the Alyssa's and the Brittany Hitches and the people that have come in and moved at a pace that really is a one-off. It's kind of that 0.1% of people that move at that pace, which is incredible. The one thing I've learned, the main takeaway I take from them is not, oh, they must be doing something different or, oh, they must this, or, oh, maybe I need to reinvent the wheel. No, no, no. I'm keeping everything the same. But you know what I realized is I'm like, holy crap, thousands and thousands and thousands of people like six months ago, months ago, were sitting around open to hearing about Q and now they've all joined. So where was I, where were all the, like, what was I doing six months ago? Right? Like that's really where should we should be thinking in our head is like, Oh, this is showing us what's possible because there's so many people open to hearing about this. It really doesn't matter. We just have to get the word out. So take time to become visible to people. Take time to create a little bit of a connection and then go for it. Go for it and ask them if they would be willing to take a look. And I'm going to hopefully give you a tool that I feel is the best way to do this. And because we're going to talk a little bit about edification. Okay. Because a lot of people, and this is the one thing that will jolt you right into comparison mode. A lot of people think that you need that 0.1% story to recruit, like be real with me straight up transparency. Everyone just be vulnerable. Raise your hand. If you feel 150% confident and sure that you personally can recruit 
like the big wigs in this industry and they will want to join you because you can take them where they want to go. Anyone? Because I definitely don't 100% believe that. <laughs> in fact, I was just talking to Katie about how I'm like, I don't think I even know how to attract the right people. I'm really renewing my mindset and telling myself I attract people in business because they know I can take them where they want to go. Like I'm working on my mindset around it. So it's okay if you are too, if you're like, shoot, I don't even know what I would do with a person like that. And so maybe you're even like, I don't, I'm just going to leave those people to someone else. And then we get into comparison. Guess what? You do not have to have made a dime with this company to recruit somebody with massive influence. Every day when I get into my IPA, I literally seek out someone who's better than me at this. I need to find someone better than me. And then that way I can use Alyssa's or Brittany Hitch's story and say, look what they did. You want to do it because I know the system that they used. Let me show you how, right? And so I can use those stories as leverage to be able to show people what's possible, even if I didn't move at that pace, right? And that's okay. So it's the art of edification. I'm going to let you guys off the hook. Edification is not just because us leaders really want you to make us look cool. <laughs> Like, can you please say all these amazing things about me before my presentation? Like, so I feel good about myself. Like, no, that is not why we teach edification. We do not need anyone to stroke our ego. Edification is a tool for you guys. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's a tool that like props up a leader and makes them sound good. No, 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 no. Edification is your best friend. And I want you to truly ask yourself, so we have QIQs, right? Q overview presentations. Ideally, in a perfect world, that is actually what we're using for our IPA every week. We are sitting down, creating some relationship, piquing people's interest and asking them if they're willing to come. And we use the most recent QIQ that's coming up to funnel people into that webinar. That's how this works. It's what I did the first day I started. It's what I literally still do today, three years in, okay? Um, but you have a tool that you can use. And I want you to ask yourself, when was the last time when you were inviting to like a Q overview or a Q presentation that you truly edified the crap out of the speaker? So much so that you gave them the best chance at closing your person. You gave them the best chance at closing your person because of the way that you edified them. Everyone thinks you have to be a great presenter to close people. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter how good I am at that stinking presentation, how many trainings I go through with Jake Spencer himself of exactly how to present and exactly what to say and exactly how to do it. Because if everyone on my team did not edify me to their prospects in one ear, out the other, nobody cares. Literally no one cares what I have to say. But if you use edification as a tool and use that to invite your prospects to hear from this person, not about this company or about these products, it could explode your business. And then this is why I really love the Fab Five and the smaller Zooms. Big Zooms are great. They're powerful. They're amazing. But think about the power when you're edifying someone. And then they're presenting to a smaller group, maybe of you, your team, that sort of thing. And during the presentation, they are mentioning your name. Think of the power. Now it's this edification wheel where you've gone on and on about this speaker and how incredible they are. And now they're saying, I love working with Katie because da, 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 da. And they're going, oh, shoot. That's that girl that they said was at the top of the company. She works. With, okay. I see. I see what's happening here. And the prospects wheels start turning. Okay. So I'm going to look you down at my notes too, because I don't want to miss anything. So your, and this is a, this is probably the key with edification. I think people are missing. I think we've all heard Jake say it, right? That we're not selling a comp plan. We're not selling a product line. We're selling a person. 
right? And it really lets us off the hook from having to know much of anything. <laughs> All you have to do, um, and I've heard him say this line as well. I always have these one-liners of Jake Spencer written down, like probably need to put them on my forearm or something. Um, like, don't chase, replace. You're not selling a person. Like, blah, blah, you know, all, the, all of his one-liners. Um, but one thing he says is the person that's going to make the most in network marketing is the one that's the best at edifying their leader. That's just the truth. He never has said the one that's going to be a millionaire is going to be the one that has the most developed skill set, the one with the largest network, the one with the most social media influence, literally none of it, product knowledge, none of it, just you have to get good at edifying your leader. Your best tool that you guys have in your toolbox as a business owner is your sponsor's ability to mentor your prospects. If they join you, they get someone else, not you and your skill set, not even the products and the comp plan and the train and like corporate, not even that. If they get you, they get this person. Who is that person that they want? So that's what's the beauty. It doesn't matter if you feel confident recruiting a big wig and getting them where they want to go. Who cares? Do you know somebody that is good at that? Because if you have in any way access to someone, I don't care if they're brand new, your upline is a brand new executive that just unlocked their fast start bonuses. Watch me edify the crap out of that person to where my prospects are like feeling so honored and privileged to be on a Zoom with that person. It does not have to be a gold or higher or equity or advisor, none of that. It can be any single person that is doing this literally anyone. And it's about how you edify them. And so you don't have to do anything. It's not about what you know. And I use edification in, in and through everything. So the first way that I use edification is to invite. Okay. This is a big one because a lot of people have these scripts going around of asking people to look at this ground floor company with this insane comp plan with infinite levels in depth and blah, 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 blah. And they're just talking up the company or they're talking up. We have these products that focus on mental health and hormone regulation and da, 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 blah, 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 blah. and you're excited and that's okay. And that's good, but you have not set up the person going to do the presentation to help close your people at all. Instead, we're selling a person, right? So the way that I invite to events, and I kid you not, I <laughs> talk about delegation and edification. I literally have Marielle Filipponi doing a presentation for people on my team right now, straight up. Um, oh, speaking of, and Brandon Stevens is FaceTiming. Oh my gosh, how many people are trying to contact me right now? This is funny. Okay, sorry. Um, that was so weird. Did y'all hear that? I was like, look, Marielle. And then it literally, Brandon Stevens tried to FaceTime me. I was like, everything at once. Okay, sorry. Um, literally, how I invited to her webinar, which I have two guests on there right now, is I said, Hey, I know this is super random. Hope you guys have had a good week so far, but are you free tonight at like 7.30 ish by chance? I really have something I want you to look out online for me. Then I waited. And then when I got a response, I was like, okay, I, they said, yes, they're free, but like, why, what's up? You're always going to get one of three responses. It's either like, yeah, I'm free. Why? Or like, no, I'm busy. Why did you ask? Or if you're like me, somebody goes, it depends. Why are you asking me? <laughs> um, that would be me. Cause I'm the skeptical one. Right. And so th this girl, for example, was like, yeah, I'm free. Why? What's up? And I was like, okay, perfect. I want to see if you do me a huge favor. I'm inviting a few people to get onto this webinar. I have someone I really want you to meet. Her name is Marielle and she is such a sweet like mama, wife. We've become really good friends, but she's actually the top earner in my entire company. You know, I'm with the company, right? Yeah. And um, she's actually in like the top 30 of income earners globally in all of this industry that I'm in. And she is taking a little bit of time out of her evening tonight to just share with the people I decide to a little bit about this company and a little bit about the products and what we're doing here. Um, will you come and check it out? I want you to meet her, right? Something like that. Short, sweet, simple. I don't talk about Q sciences. I don't say comp plan. I don't say timing. I don't say ground floor. I don't say mental health. <laughs> I don't say any of that. I just talk about Marielle. 
Okay. Another way you can do that is literally like, Hey, I am so excited. I'm sure you've seen, I've partnered with a new company and I really want you to meet my mentor. She actually just partnered with the company last month and she already hit the third rank in just 60 days. She's flown past the ranks and is doing so incredible. And she's working with me personally and she's very busy. She's a mom of four. She used to be a social worker. And now she's taking some time out tonight to just share a little bit about what we have going on. I'd love to get your thoughts on it. Will you come? Okay. Anything around inviting to the person is always going to be more impactful because talk about the easiest follow-up instead of what did you think, right? And they're looking at this. When you lead with the product, that's what they're going to look at. Glasses on, dissecting, trying to give you feedback. Quit inviting, asking for feedback because they love to give feedback about their tonality and she seemed nice, but da da da. And I was distracted by that. And you're like, oh my God, do you want to buy this or not? And it's all, it's like hilarious. It's because you're asking for it. What you ask for, you'll get. So if you say, I want you to just hear from my friend, it's very simple because it's not going to be about the products. It's not going to be whatever. Guess what your follow up is? Isn't she amazing? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you were on. What did you think? Isn't she cool? I told you. Isn't she so legit? Isn't she so kind? Would you ever have guessed she's making literally like $1,700 a month already in just two years? Can you believe that? Would you ever even know she's so humble? She just does this part-time. Isn't that crazy? It's so simple when you make it that way to connect. Well, then guess what's even easier? The system, the next step in the system. When they show interest, what's the next step? Get out of the way, right? My sister calls it the peak pass. <laughs> She's like, peak their interest, get them exposed, just pass them on, shut up, get out of the way as quickly as possible. And so she literally just, now you've shown them. Okay, well, what'd you think? Oh my gosh, she, yeah, she was really cool. I don't know though, because you know me, I'm like really anal about ingredients and I wanna dig into the hemp, da, 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 da. Okay, no problem. Let's see if she's got time. You know, I know, I know she's a top earner. I mentioned that to you and that sort of thing, but honestly, we've gotten pretty close. I bet you I could get her on the phone with you. Let me see when she has some time and then I will let you know a couple options for us. Not okay, when are you available and we'll make it work no matter what? And then you text your mentor like, can you please do tomorrow at 10 a.m. or I'll die? And they're like, no, I can't do tomorrow. Or they do because hashtag boundaries. We got to talk about that on a whole other time. Um, but set your sponsor up. The edification process never stops. So you're saying, okay, let me find out. Jen, when are you available over the next couple of days? Can you give me some daytime and evening options to send to my prospect who is on the call tonight? She loved your vibe. She's open to hearing about the business. Great. This time, this time, this time. Guess what? It's okay if Jen is like hanging out with her husband and not responding to you that night. Your prospect can wait. You already told her how busy Jen is, how rare it was, and how amazing it is that she takes time out to do these presentations for you and your business. So let them sit there. She's busy. I'm sure she'll get back to us. La talk about abundance. They're not going to feel, they're probably like, well, God, why aren't you like more desperate for my sale? Cause we're not, we're freaking Q freaking sciences. You guys, like we do not need to be desperate at all. Everyone's scared of us. <laughs> Let's just soak that in for a moment. We don't need to worry. Timing is here. And so we wait to get responses. We go back. Okay, great. She can talk tomorrow night at 10 a.m. or tomorrow at 10 a.m. or the next day at 2 p.m. Which one works, right? You just make it really simple by continuing the edification process. In doing so, you've also now showed your, because remember the whole reason why we do this, do you guys remember? It's because we're trying to model to our person what they will have when they partner with us. If you educate them on the products, if you answer their questions, if you talk about the company and the comp plan and the this, they will think they have to do that. And then they'll say, sorry, that's intimidating AF. I don't want to do that. That's overwhelming to me, right? Instead, they're going, wow, 
talk about the support that she has and the respect that she has for these leaders. Wow, they have boundaries. Wow, she didn't encroach on her family time. Oh, wow, she was with her husband so they wouldn't get on the phone with me because they weren't desperate for my sale and having commission breath. They walk in knowing our culture, our vibe, our system because they've already seen it. And then it's really easy to teach them how, because they're like, you know what I did with you? We're going to do that now again, right? And it's really simple after modeling that. So I use it for inviting. I use it to connect. And then the last thing I want to share with you guys really quick, because I know it's getting late, is that um, I love to use edification on social media. I, in fact, was trying to scroll through Alyssa's, Katie, Jen, Bridget, Um, Oh my gosh, there's so many. Ashley, like I'm seeing so many, just you guys are all killing it. Um, Hana, like so many people that are in leadership in this team. Before getting on here, I scrolled through their pages to see how often you guys were tagging them in things. And I'm going to be completely honest. It wasn't as much as I was thinking it was going to be. Because if Katie Bristow was anywhere in my upline, You best believe homegirl, I would have already done a boomerang tonight just of like of her face to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful to have someone like her locking arms with me. She invited me to this call where this top earner was speaking. I get access to her and she gets access to her. And like, I've never had support like this in my life. Tag, 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 tag. And I'll tell you why. The reason it's important to brag on your mentor publicly as often as possible is a little story I like to call Francesca Fields. Does everybody know who Francesca Fields is? Okay. She is the second ever Black Diamond in Q Sciences. Modest as can be, humble, mama of four, used to be in social work, self-proclaimed introvert, never thought she'd be good at this. And then here we are, Q Sciences where everyone's hopes and dreams become unlocked because of a system. She was in another company and she had a friend named Chastity. Does anyone know who Chastity is? Have you ever seen her on stage, training, whatever? Yes, a couple of you know her, but many of you maybe have not. She was friends with Chastity from her last company and Chastity is so, so, so sweet. Never had huge like, oh, I want to be on the advisory council, blah, blah, blah. Just did this to get a little bit of an extra income, really loves her family and what it brings for them and wants to help others. Really, really sweet person. Fran watched Chastity edify her upline, Tara Truax, beautifully. Chastity knew how to work the system because anyone who's looking at this from a business perspective is asking themselves when they're looking at a leader, does this person know who they are? Does this person know where they're going? And does this person know how to get me where I want to go? Okay. Those are the questions they're asking. Chastity was brand new. She probably didn't really know who she was in Q yet. She may not have really known where she was going. She's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to keep following the system. Whatever. She maybe did not feel like she was equipped to help someone like Fran get where she wanted to go. But guess who did? Tara Truax. And because Chastity shouted her out, shared her success, bragged on her. I'm so proud of my mentor. The fact that I get to work with her is such a blessing. Fran watched and watched. Did you know Francesca had never met Tara ever? Never met her. And they were not friends on Facebook either. And because of what Chastity did so beautifully, Fran texted her late, late one night and said, I want to talk to you and your friend Tara. That's it. That is the power of edification. So I need you guys to get better skill set wise on making your mentors look really, really good because it's okay if you're not confident. It's okay if you know nothing because you have someone that can help someone else get where they want to go. And guess who I have access to? That's your in. This person's mentoring me I owe so much of my success to the system that they've plugged me into and they're locking arms with me to work with the next people I bring into this business. Do you want to meet her? 
I bet I could like, we've become actually pretty good friends if I'm being honest. Like I could probably get her on the phone with you. Are you open? Right. It's all about that edification. And to be honest, it's easy. Like you guys, have like just some of the names I just rattled off, you guys have a crazy high caliber of true talent and skill in leadership on this team. In fact, I even edify these leaders and invite to their Zooms. So I don't know why y'all aren't doing it because I definitely am. I do it with Fran. I do it with anyone. I just the other night, Fran did a presentation. I texted her. I'm like, hey, can you talk about how you had to rebuild your influence after you were on, on social media? Because I have this introvert girl that's scared. She's like, sure, on it. And she said it during her presentation. Are you guys doing that? Are you texting your upline saying, hey, I've got this girl who's really hesitant about hemp because blah, blah, blah. Can you plug that in? By the way, I have five guests on. So can you mention me too? Why don't, wh why not do that? partner with them. We are partners, right? And they can help you recruit big people if you just leverage them the way that you should. And that's the beauty of Q. Honestly, it's my favorite part is the partnerships, how I've got Kelly Allred. I've got Kimball and Stacy as my QFit partners on my little QFit app. I feel like, oh, I've got these partners. I thought about the people that are like coaches in their companies. How crazy is it that we don't have to be the coach? We just plug people into, do you guys see what Jake has done here? He's literally made everything where we plug our people to someone. Have you noticed that yet? It's because he knows. He knows how to build a business in network marketing and it's to sell a person, not Q Trim, but Kimball and Stacy and their Q Fit team. You guys picking up what he's throwing down? It's intertwined in everything that Q talks about for a reason, because they know what they're talking about. So use your team, use your mentors. Let's edify the crap out of them. Everybody like take a video or something right now of your mentor, share a photo of you and them, right? Go and say like, gosh, yeah, it's cool. The money that she's been able to make and how blah, blah, blah. But I love that she, she's taught me boundaries. She's taught me prioritizing her family. She's taught me how to make sure I go on my date night once a week. I've never had leadership like this. And she's doing a call for people that are open to learning about the business I'm in tonight. I'm so honored, so excited. Let me know if you want the info, right? Like those kinds of things should be happening all the time. So anyways, I love you guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop talking. I've been talking for forever, but I really love you guys. I'm really proud of this team. You guys are so awesome. And um, I'm really thankful that I got to do this. That was amazing. Um, I love listening to you like everyone else. I have so many notes, but one of the things that really stuck out to me was how you bring someone in is how they are going to expect to work the business. And I think that that's so important because we think people are going to listen to what we say, but they actually are just watching what we're doing when we bring them in. Kind of like and our children. to have that abundant mindset of yeah. it's okay. Like we're not going to get back necessarily within, you know, it'll take 24 hours or like it teaches them. We don't just jump. And you know what else that does is it prevents all of us from burnout. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Katie, did you have something you wanted to share that you guys liked? Can I just say something real quick? Yeah, B, go. Sorry, I've been stuffing my face. First of all, Kristen, you suck at training so bad. Like, I don't even know why we have you here. So bad. I would like Hi. to highlight a couple of people in the text thread that said, what happens when you edify your upline and they get signed up by everyone, someone else, that person? First of all, I'm going to be very bold and say that is bullshit. It is not okay. That is not the Q culture. Not okay. Okay. People are going to learn this culture or they're going to be gone. I would think in time, I'm going to be very bold with this right now, because you guys, we are a family, not just in Q crew, but as a company, I also realize that people coming in from other companies are going to have some trust issues, some concerns. I get it. I, I was there, right? We've all been there right? We get where you're at. If you are edifying your upline and your upline takes them, that's just a miscommunication as to how things go. See, we are a volume-based comp plan, okay? 
So it doesn't matter if any one of you on my team edify me and someone wants to sign up with me because of our relationship, this is what I get to do as your upline. Girl, guy, homie, bro, whatever it is, I am so excited that you feel this way because this is what we get to offer you. You're not just going to have me. You're going to have the person that brought you on and you're going to have the people that brought me on and beyond. And together we are going to blow this up and we are going to raise you up to be so strong that you're going to give this to your team. And down the road, three months, six months, three years from now, if this same exact scenario happens, it's going to be gone and done and not even an issue because we work in teams. There's an add to that, Bridget. Yeah. Just one really quick thing. Let me just tell you that would never, ever happen with my prospect because I wouldn't allow no. that to happen no. because of my thorough relationship and follow-up that I have mm -hmm. with my prospects. Yep. At the end of the day, if all you're doing is posting on social media and sharing other people's stories and that sort of thing, then that's not the Q way either. You have to right. have connections. I use social media to water the seeds that I've planted, not to plant seeds out of nowhere. I reach out to people. I connect. I use this system already. So I've already invited them to a webinar. I've already asked them to hop on a three-way call with my mentor where my mentor is now edifying me back. I've continued the relationship. And then they see a post on social media of who I'm working with and their success or whatever. And that just waters the seed. So that is a big red flag. If you're thinking, oh gosh, only social media, that that just means you need to hone in on your prospects, make sure they have that relationship with you. And at the end of the day, we can't run our business out of scarcity. We just cannot. And if it's scary to us to highlight someone else's success, then that's a way bigger something going on. Yep. And it, it is to just maybe like, how, oh, I'm nervous of losing someone. Yeah. Okay. So you have to take the mirror, right. And look back. I love that you said that because you also can't think that you're going to pee on someone and mark your territory because you share with them one time, right. In the end, the person or the people that are being exposed to Q have a choice to work with whomever they feel is a better fit for them. Right. But there's two things. First, I love what Kristen said. Look in the mirror. If you're finding over and over again, every time you talk to someone and they talk to someone else, they don't want to sign up with you. Okay, that's that person's choice as to whether or not they want to sign with somebody else than you. However, as leaders, especially if they're in your own downline and they're edifying you, why would you want to take them away? There's no benefit to signing someone up or taking someone from your team. What you want to do is help that person in your team have success and learn how to be who you are, to be who they want to be, to be who that prospect is wanting to work with, right? So it is a two-way street. I'm glad you said that, Kristen, because there comes a point where we as the uplines being edified need to say, whoa, whoa, where were you? Where did this start? Send them back. Also knowing though that the prospect gets to choose and if they choose someone outside of you, why is that? And be ready to look at that, see that, receive that and work on that, okay? But we're definitely not a steal people away mentality. Sorry, I just got fired up and I had to say that. So oh, good. I'm so glad you said that because I know that we needed to address that. Um, Katie, did you want to share something, hen? Um, I was just going to say that edifying through social media posts. I mean, it's it's everything. I mean, people follow people, and um, I mean, even just this past week, I had a I wrote it in the comment here. I mean, a, a friend been following just what I shared with her months ago, and when you get to talk about the people you work with. It's attractive. She's like, I just want to travel and have fun with you. You're having way too much fun with these people. <laughs> so, so Kristen, thank you. That was amazing. It's huge.
All right, you guys. Well, that wraps up our huddle for the evening. Um, we'll see you guys next Monday. Now, don't forget, we have two QIQs on Thursday. So you guys can unmute and say goodbye and tell Kristen how much you loved this. Thank game. you. And hey, thank why you. Not take a little picture of awesome. you. Tag her. Thank and you. <laughs> thank you. You're amazing, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you guys. Awesome, job. Kristen. awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. So good. Thank, thank you. you.